Mr. Weber, I... Jonathan, my name is Jonathan and I've opened the package. The Foreigner. Even though it's supposed to be an action movie, it is seriously like in, in the action department. Throughout the entire movie, Steven barely even pushed a couple of folks. Well, at least they are plenty of explosions. Yeah, whenever there is a random shed or some ruins, they are about to get blown up real soon. Have a barbecue. The same goes for characters. If you see someone on screen, chances are they are about to get killed. And if you don't see them on screen, they are already dead. And then there is this invincible character. There is invincible character in every Seagull's movie. This time I don't mean Seagull though. Our Max. The real Terminator. The only thing, he can take down only unarmed people and conveniently dies every time he meets someone who can fight back. The first part of the movie is just filled with all of those random people talking about who knows what. The whole second part, the characters are just basically explaining Seagull what the heck is happening. Somehow you always know, don't you? But honestly, it feels like everyone's clueless except for the Aikido master. What's going on? Then you tell me what happened. You know I'm not a talkative man. <sighs> and Donnie and I also didn't have enough brain power to figure out the plot. Gotta say, even Donnie couldn't figure it out. You see? Even. E even Donnie, okay. For you, it is a typical problem. A few hours early. Uh... The movie starts with an older man checking out some guards in Poland with an epic music on background. Uh, is the package. Bro, you all just freak out the delivery guy that way. Let the kind old man have a try. Where's the package? I want really? the package. We'll get the package. I suggest you hire a professional. Well, since we're talking about the professional... This girl totally has that professional vibe going on. Listen, if I'm not jealous, you don't need to be jealous. If you really love me, you be jealous. Although it's kind of unethical what she's saying, considering her line of work. Donny, what do you think? Alex, I, I have no idea what's going on. It was a nice try, anyway. Nice try. What are they talking about? It looks like Steven ran into some peculiar problems, delicate, and the girl wasn't able to help him to resolve them. So they summon Steven to go from France to Poland for his old man's funeral. I'll be there, Sean. I said I'd be there. But instead of rushing directly to the airport, he straight up heads to that dude's place to chill in a cozy dining room with those naked guys on the background. And since he's already there, why not make some extra cash and to make a quick delivery from the nearby village? Or are they still in France and now they are taking Sensei to the airport? This barn is way too small to be an airport. And Steven seems to be rushing to the bathroom. The barn is too small for a bathroom for Seagull either. There's nothing inside the house except a table and a few chairs. And these guys were so shocked to find an action movie star as their guest that they accidentally beat their tongues in surprise. The moment the pro courier gets the package, he immediately puts it on the table, because it's well known that no delivery is complete without a little gunfight. And since there's barely any furniture in the house, Seafood is trying to hide his belly behind the corner. It's not like he has to worry though. The bad guys are here to shoot the dishes, not him. Yeah, you could totally hide behind the box. Or even an old lady if you want. Yeah, by the way, ma'am. Nothing personal, but tonight you'll be sleeping in the open field next to our dead driver. If it gets cold, don't hesitate to cozy up the fire. On the way back, Seagull's body wants to check out what is inside the box, since they are taking it to another country. Then, if you touch it again, I will blow your two-inch dick off. Did he just say he will blow this guy's dick off? I will blow your two-inch dick off. And you do understand they gotta figure out what is in the package they are taking to the airport. So. Max will have no choice but to give it a feel. I would even go further to say this. Based on how much Steven knows about his body's package size, it's clear they've been on some deliveries together before. Alex, I'm an old school penguin. I don't endorse such things. I totally agree. Hooking up with co-workers is a recipe for disaster. I don't mean that. I mean, first Steven agrees to take the package to Germany and now he's suddenly avoiding the job. The job isn't finished. Find yourself a new delivery boy. Oh, that's that's just typical seafood being seafood. I wouldn't be shocked if his stunt double ends up carrying the box while the action star sits at the empty tables in fancy restaurants and palaces, checking out naked girls with a smart face. That's what we pay you for, to talk to people. 
So he's not a delivery boy anymore. To talk to people? Steven gets paid to annoy people with his smacking, heavy breathing and mumbling. You didn't think he's in these movies for free, didn't you? I got to... Will you deliver the package to the agreed address? Okay. So at the airport, the United States ambassador tries to impress Seagal with poorly photoshopped pictures. Hi. And when that doesn't work, they try to entertain him with a flashy somersault over the escalator. While people at the graveyard are saying their last goodbye to Steven's dad, the sensei himself got a little lost. So now he is alone, grieving over some another random grave. After leaving the cemetery, the professional courier takes a look at another set of poorly photoshopped pictures at his brother's place. So when the brother comes back from the funeral, asking where the hell the cookie master was, Seafood immediately changes the subject. Beautiful place, man. Love this. True, it's a nice apartment. There is a table, chairs. There are comfy sofas in the next room. What else do we need to feel happy? Well, for example, I had this little stand for my phone, so it wouldn't be just lying around on the floor. There are people in the world who actually do things for the right reasons. Seafood is chilling in his budget hotel room, phone in hand, deep in thought why people would even bother doing the right stuff. But it's hard to focus on those thoughts when your mind keeps drifting to all messed up stuff. Mm. Schoolgirls. His pal Max Ryan now goes completely nuts and starts going on a killing spree. Alex, if I were the security guard, I'd be extra careful when searching people who grab a tray and pretend they are hotel mates. They didn't search him because Max just radiates trust. Just look at him. I have an errand in New Yorker and need someone I can trust. Shall I send you? He's still questioning things. I'd trust him with my money management. Any day. No. Don't tell me you would trust someone to handle those 30 bucks in your account. How do you know I've got only 30 bucks? <laughs> it was a guess. Seriously? 30 bucks, bruh? <laughs> anyway, turns out Max isn't such a reliable partner after all and shoots the delivery client with a gun hidden in his sock. By the way, Alex, a great place to store your wealth. You do own some socks, right? Ha ha ha. Do you though? I don't need those. I don't need them either. Got that, pal? Oh, here's the package! We are already halfway into the movie and I still have no idea who these people are and what they want from each other. I want someone to finally tell the sensei that there's an old washcloth stacked on the back of his head. Steven hasn't pushed anyone yet, there were no boobs either. What's the point of the movie like that? And while you're pondering existential questions, let me remind the viewers, yours, not mine by the way, how important for you, not me, is their support. Alex is stressing out when viewers aren't hitting that like button. Hey, not that much. Yeah, you can tell it to someone else. I'm telling it to someone else. And besides giving a thumbs up, you can also support the channel with a small donation called Super Thanks. It's Donny saying, for me, support in the comment is enough. Or you can even become a channel's member, that way you'll get to see the raw, uncut demos of upcoming videos and enjoy some other sweet cookies. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. I got you covered. The Aikido master sets up a meeting with a recipient's wife at some remote suburban train station. He sends another random guy to deliver the package instead of doing it himself. While he's waiting for his toxic gossip train. He's got a one-way Reiki to manipulation station. That's a gossip train. Oh, okay, I can't sing it anymore. And when he returns to the hotel room, he bumps into a new character we haven't seen yet. Are you the boyfriend? I don't know what made Steven think that he was her boyfriend, but it looks like he messed up the packages and gave the lady someone else's order. The true professional. Blood's unable to circulate properly to your brain because of the clock. Asphyxiation is the process by which air is shut off to the lungs. And then they head to the suburban train station and it seems like Steven forgot the real package there. <laughs> Nope. 
It's also fake. Well, dear passengers, you have to come to the station to meet your family and friends. Now you have a wonderful opportunity to meet your ancestors. Then Steven remembers what he was hired for. Dude had just one job – deliver the right package to the right place. Mm -hmm. Instead, the cookie master just sneaks around the recipient's house, trespasses onto his property and kills the security guard. The girls totally ignore him. And even if someone catches him breaking doors, they just give him a friendly pat on the back. Uh, sorry to bother you, sir. Have you seen anyone sketchy around here? Lately there were too many extra dead bodies appearing in our garden. The editing work is incredible. Well, the stunt double is fighting the guard, Steven is heading somewhere. The next shot – Max is standing at the reception with a cigarette in his mouth, trying to charm the girl into spilling the room number of the professional courier. I'm sorry, sir, I cannot tell you. Pops, you could call. Smartass! Trying to spy on the number she's dialing. I'm sorry, there's really nothing else I can do but take a message. And then Max delivers a bullet in her head. It's not for me to give him advice, but if you want to silently sneak up to the target into the hotel room, it would be a good idea to drop a cigarette like way earlier. At this point you can smell Max coming from the street man. And that's the whole story of Crazy Max. He traveled around Europe killing everyone he met, while smoking was killing him. Well, actually he got a shotgun blast up close and it just spooked him a bit. Now he's all fired up and ready to kick defenseless people's asses again. In the meantime, the killer dude, Mr. Mims, gives the ambassador a call to blow his mind with the badass car the sensei is driving around Germany. Driving a four-door silver Mercedes. Sheesh. However, it turns out it's not Siegel driving the car, it's one of his stun doubles. Those stun doubles doing our job instead of us. Now things are getting really disturbing with the star Buddhist. It has come to a point when he creeps on a woman while she is sleeping in a ceramic bowl in the middle of an empty room in some museum. Did they connect the bathtub to the water? Do you see any pipes? Then why is she? Well, the rich people have their quirks, you know. Oh yeah! Who better than you to understand how people live with money? Or you'll call the police and tell them about your boyfriend. I told you he's not my boyfriend. I don't really care. Come on, bro, it doesn't bother him at all. Steven is completely obsessed with the idea of Black Lover. If you're planning to hand it over, why switch packages in the first place? I'm a consummate professional. Or did you just mix them up? Come on, spill the beans, we are all fam here. So the hitman shows up at Siegel's place and together they go to this abandoned building where Siegel left a bomb stuck to a DVD. Whoa! Looks like someone is about to blow up another black dude. In search for dicks longer than two inches. You do kind of remind me of my cousin Delbert from down around Boogaloozie. Since there aren't enough innocent people for a big boom, he simply takes away the killer's weapon. Then they both completely forget about the gun and simply stroll around ruins, sometimes stopping to do whatever it is. And guess who shows up in the ruins? The old pal and boyfriend, Mr. Invincible Max. And this scene is the most realistic portrayal of two ex-lovers bumping into each other. You know, for some reason you don't look too good. You don't look so good yourself. Don't frank with me. Out of nowhere, Meredith pops up. Then, together with Steven, they both ride off into the sunset, leaving their ex-boyfriend to hide behind boxes from the other people who showed up at the building. Steven is at a restaurant again, sitting at an empty table as always. Half of the people sitting at the tables next to them strictly keep an eye on the couple. And to lose the trackers, Steven goes for this insane move all by himself without stun double. Oh no. He gets up from the table and walks right out of the restaurant. To be fair, the followers did manage to get up from the tables too. But escaping from the restaurant, this became a mission impossible. So Steven and his bro sit down in this bar next door and there the cookie master goes full on brag mode about how epic it was to travel to different countries. That was what they call a foreigner. 
The little bro shows off a photo of himself posing with some famous landmark to prove he's been aboard too. But you can't fool the sensei. The photo was taken right here in Poland, literally around the corner, at this square where the American ambassador likes to hang out, smoking and casually posing in front of snipers. And Steven Seagal was like, fuck snipers. And fuck the American ambassador. We're back in Germany again, where Steven comes face to face with Max's barrel. <laughs> At first the sensei tries to spot the opening through those chubby eye wrinkles, and once he gets his eyes open, boom, now he's aiming at Max himself. Still they decide to team up, even though I don't get why Seafood needs Max anyway. The Cookie Master allows Max also have a few shots just for fun, but with one condition. All the girls must go to Steven. But mostly this dude is just dead weight drawn and wanted attention to the sneaky ninja. You know, those guards don't seem all that professional. Yeah, real pros use guns to shoot, not to use them in hand to hand combat. We've pretty much figured out that shooting at Steven is a waste of time. Oh, thank godness we're done with the story of that jerk. Or is he gonna come back to life again? <laughs> this time the action hero shoots him up close. Bro, he doesn't even keep his finger on the trigger. Alex, we might question Steven's delivery skills, but when it comes to shooting, he doesn't miss. And here comes the main boss, finally. All that time when the couple was making all that noise in his yard, this dude just chilled in an empty room of the museum, staring at an empty table. And it turns out, our overqualified courier goes all ninja only just to show off his insane dancing skills in front of the main boss. Listen to this. Bring my daughter back safely. And what about your wife? I leave that up to your best judgment. Mission updated. Brustin can't even get the job done to deliver a package. I suggest to start with something small. Make him bring some burgers from the closest McDonald's. You'll be happy if he manages not to eat at least napkins on his way. Yes. No! What the f dude? Donny, come on, you're promised. You Sorry, Alex, I don't remember this movie as well. They showed trendy editing just before the shot. It's like a sacred bowl. Now the main boss has to get really crafty to stay alive. Your services are no longer required. He fires the jerk with a gun and the bullet in his chest. You should fire at him, not just him. Meanwhile, Matilda is stuck in the village. Her name is Meredith. Checking, checking out the, the photos of her white lover. As her daughter is trying to figure out how to jump over the jump rope at least once. Some folks shows up at the house and Seagull is already being transported like a VIP on a freaking truck. And Steven, if you keep aiming that shotgun like that, you'll be missing your face after the very first shot. And anyway, using a gasoline canister to deal with your enemies is way more fun. Plus you can burn down another useless shadow that nobody gives a damn about. The photos of the lava. And now Steven is the lava. He brings the mother and daughter alone to friends and wouldn't let them appreciate the views or enjoy sunshine. And I need you to keep these closed. Their best bets now is taking walks around the sketchy neighborhoods, where if you dare to look away for a moment, someone's already trying to snatch your kid. Hey, hey, get away from that girl now. <laughs> it's not safe <laughs> on the streets. Steven quickly gets fed up with the whole family thing and decides it's time to ditch the freeloaders. Listen, I just kind of want to concentrate on how to get you out of Paris. Is there any place in particular that uh, you'd like to go? America. <laughs> <laughs> you dream. Steven just dumps them in the, at a random cafe in the worst part of the city, where it's like asking for trouble if you don't have a gun under your belly. Back home the immortal Max is waiting for him. So he also can walk through walls. What he can't is staying alive after Aikido Master dragging him around by the collar in slow motion. And as a result he dies from embarrassment and a light tap on the shoulder. Oh, and by the way, he got a message from Meredith and her daughter. It turns out they are doing all right, which means he can peacefully head to the swamp and annoy people while they are working, blocking the windshield with his huge body. Steven is happy. <laughs> 